Well, I mentioned before the driver comfort is extremely important. Uh, if you have an uncomfortable driver or something's just out of place, they're not going to have a good race and that kind of defeats the purpose of being able to custom tailor a cage and everything else to them. So if they're not comfortable, it's not going to be a good day and you probably won't get a great recommendation for being the fabricator for them. So yesterday we took a lot of time and I mean a lot of time to ensure that the seat placement where the driver was at was exactly where he wanted it to be. The reason why is the interest of saving weight, I'm not putting in adjustable sliders or angles or anything else like that. This seat is going to be static, not adjustable, in the direct position, as light as possible. So this can be a little bit tricky because you have to spend a lot of time with the driver and make sure that everything is a-okay. I mean, you can do things like shim the seat and move it uh, you know, up or down just a little bit. I'll show you how to do that. But you need to make sure that wherever it is that he says go, that's where it's going to be and that's where it's going to stay and you need to make sure it stays that way. So now we're going to get into moving, this, or moving on to building the seat brackets as you could probably guess. So I'm going to grab a little bit of steel, measure a billion times if we have to and that's of course very important to remember and uh, we're going to get the seat brackets built. Alright, got our Sparco circuit seat. This is a fabricated tube mount or tube end, depending on which one you want to call it. And it's basically a, it's a way to basically mount up any tubular section to what you're going into it. So I'm going to slip a bolt into the end here and just kind of place this on here. You get it kind of snug. Now we're going to go place it in the car, get it as close to as possible to where we had it before, and then we'll start fabricating everything else. So, fabricated tube mount. We'll uh, place the nut on the end here. Get this one locked down. I'm just going to leave them kind of loose so we have a little bit of maneuverability. Place the other one here. Now this tiny bit of maneuverability that they give us will allow the seat to adjust and move and get tweaked ever so slightly. I mean, literally a fraction of an inch means a couple of degrees of adjustment. So try to give as much room as possible while maintaining safety. What I like to do is just kind of center them in here. Now this section over here kind of interferes with our center console, but we might be able to get around that. Um, I'm just going to place them out there and see uh, see how close we are. Probably shift it or move it over a little bit, maybe. Now that's going to have to be modified. So we'll set our seat and place it back in position. Now, yesterday we were fiddling around with uh, getting them set just right. We do have measurements and whatnot to uh, ensure that we get the seat in the correct position. But I do recall I wedged this board in here to give him just a little bit more better placement for his uh, for his layback position. So I'm going to put this back up in here. The biggest things to remember on this one is we measured where the base sits from the bulkhead here, or at least from the section of the, you know, a good general reference point from the from the chassis itself to the, the base of the seat has a certain amount of inches in it. And then of course the layback, the top of the seat to, in this case where I measured to the center of the main hoop, 
also has a certain measurement. So that's going to place our layback. The boards will place our height. And then, of course, all we have to do then is just center it in there. So as soon as we get it all set in and centered, we'll get it all, uh, all the pieces filled in. So I'm going to grab the seat real quick. Absolutely must use a lot of caution here in setting it up. I don't want to scratch the heck out of it. So I'm going to get a general measurement real quick here. Let's see where we land. Alright, layback was measured from roughly the harness position about four and a half inches to the center of the harness bar, which I have. And the lower position, which also determines the layback, I measure at 16 and a half inches. And right now I'm sitting at 17. Now this is going to have to move just a little bit. Well, after getting everything trimmed down and whatnot, it's kind of unfortunate. My first design is not going to work as I uh, had planned. so. The reason why is, uh, it may be hard to tell in this angle here, but directly above the bolt here, or the mount, is where the seat mount goes. So, you can't slide the tube inside of there, and if you did, even trim it down, which I had originally thought, you could probably get the ratchet in there. There's, there's just no room to work in there, and it would compromise the integrity of the mount itself. So, uh, I'm actually going to bend up some, uh, some flat stock here. We'll bend it upward and then mount directly to here, and then we'll run our our tube and bracing back and forth on that. So uh, it looks like I need a three and a quarter inch height off the brake plus two inches. So I'm gonna get that measured up real quick, bent up, and then we'll get fabricating on this bracket. The same situation happened on the other side as well, and there's even more or even less access to the bolt over there. So I'm gonna get that one measured out as well, and then we'll get back to fabbing on this to uh, box it all and finish it all up. All right, this is a pretty easy bracket. Just get that kind of set in place real quick. Nice and easy like. We got just a little bit of wiggle room here. Just to make sure that it goes in correctly. Now I'm gonna absolutely double check my measurements again to ensure that the seat is completely squared and that it has not moved. Layback is correct still. And our general seat position is absolutely still correct. Now, we're good to go. Now, very, very important that this does not move. So you can only put a couple of tacks down on here as well because you don't want to burn the seat. We'll put on just enough to hold it in place. Okay, that essentially is one mount in. I'm gonna go do the other side real quick. Well, you can see it's really, really tight inside of here and this is much more difficult to reach. But uh, I don't want to burn the seat and I don't want to take any chances on that. So what I'm going to do is mark the tube to the bracket. And we should get very close here. So to actually mount these together, I use some uh, 5 8 OD 120 wall DOM. Just gonna tack them in here. And these are just uh, these are just little tack welds to get them set in the right spot.
That will allow me to get it all positioned in there later. Alright. So I'm going to let those cool down for just a moment and then we'll run back and start tacking it all together. I have to pull it all apart of course to, uh, you know, to ensure that it doesn't burn the crap out of the seat. So as soon as that gets cooled down we'll be lay down some good welds on there and uh, take it out and weld it all together completely. Okay so for the left side we're going to start with the same tubing that we used on the right. I'm just going to get a solid tack in there just to start out with. Now I did of course pull the center console to make uh, installation and working with this just a little bit easier. We're going to go very easy on this because again we don't want to burn the seat and this is very very close. Just a simple, very solid tack weld will do the job. This is of course one of the really nice things about using a TIG is heat control. Now the only general cautions you really need to be made aware of are the amount of uh, distortion each weld can have. So if you've only tacked on one side, when you start tacking the other side, it'll want to kind of pull and tweak it just a little bit. So you want to just do little tacks on the opposite sides in as many corners as possible, allowing it to cool down each time. That way the amount of distortion is minimized and then you can go back and buzz it all together. Alright, one more piece before I get started on the other side, and this is just a little reinforcement. Not a bad looking piece. So I'm going to let this cool down real quick and then we're going to jump on the other side again. So with all the welding complete, I'm just going to do some uh, little trimming and uh, kind of do some cleanup work here. Make these tubes look, you know, not so random, I guess, if you will. I got a couple of pieces here. Of course, this one is going to have to be trimmed down in order to fit underneath the, uh, the console. And I'm going to trim this tube down a little bit. Uh, this side here, I want to trim this tube down a little bit, and I'd like to give these two some angles to kind of match that really nice style that we have going on up top and or at the bottom here. So I'm just going to grip the cutoff wheel on the end of the grinder, kind of trim these down a little bit here. Everything looks like it lines up beautifully. Now I did leave the seat just a little bit loose for the purpose of getting everything in here. Thinking it would ease it because sometimes, I mean, even though you try not to uh, let it warp and distort, uh, you know, 
Sometimes it's just gonna. There's a lot of things that control that, but you know, every now and again it happens. It's uh, it's kind of unfortunate, but you know, it's all part of the game. But these uh, these holes and everything lines up just perfectly. So looks like I did it right. All right, I'm gonna get this tightened down here and now we can move on to the door bars.